Goldilocks Productions broadcasts universal cosmic frequencies that unlock, awaken, and expand the consciousness of our worldwide viewers and listeners. Are you ready to experience motivation, magic, miracles, and messages from spirits? Discover the hidden secrets of astrology, numerology, destiny cards, and more. Learn how to use ancient wisdom for the modern world. You are entering into the higher realms with Jeremy Ryden. Namaste. Welcome to Higher Realms, and we're so glad to have you here. This is the channel where we pursue all things spiritual, metaphysical, and the intuitive sciences to help you tap into your divine spark so you can live the life you were called and you can find your purpose and you can live out your potential. Thank you for being a guest tonight. And it's very exciting. I always have all kinds of guests that join me on the show from time to time. Next week, I'm going to have a phenomenal psychologist and a woman entrepreneur coach, Wendy Lloyd. She's going to be here next Tuesday. So if you thought about as a woman opening up your own business or how to how to be able to become more successful in the transition of your career, you want to watch next uh, Tuesday night. And then on the 11th of August, we're going to have a celebration of singing, a celebration of music. We're having all kinds of special guests that are going to be here on Tuesday, the 11th of August. And we got Sarah online saying, hello, Jeremy. She's going to be singing on Tuesday, August 11th. So mark that down in your calendar. Every Tuesday night is going to be something special right here on Higher Realms. We're also looking at the 18th. We're going to have a special August 18th with Jacob Cooper in the house. He is a writer of near-death experience. He uh, actually died and came back to life. And he's going to be sharing what he knows about the afterlife and how the afterlife can be embraced in this life. And then we're going to go on the 25th. We're having a very special guest, a, um, a Reverend Sal out of Douglas, uh, Michigan. He did a movie, wrote a book, and it became a movie a few years ago. And he's also wrote another book on how to really evolve spiritually. And we're having him on Tuesday, to August 25th. August is the month you do not want to miss. Next Tuesday, you don't want to miss the last Tuesday of July with Wendy Lloyd. But tonight, you got me. It's right here, Jeremy Ryden, your soul coach. What is a soul coach? Well, my job is to help people really align with their soul, to hear the soul, to feel the things that are going on in their life. To You know, I always tell people, your soul knows what you need. What happens is we get a lot of fear, a lot of worry, a lot of confusion, and that tries to drown out the hope of our soul. It tries to drown out the direction of our soul. And I want to encourage you to listen to the deepest part of yourself, your longings, your desires, your hopes, and your wishes. These are things that are not just uh, uh, there by accident. They're planted there for you, and they're there for you to pursue. So tonight's a very special Tuesday night just with me, and I really want to be reaching out to people that have suffered loss. Maybe you've lost, uh, maybe you've lost your partner. Maybe your husband has died. Your wife has transitioned. Maybe there's a lot of mothers out there that have lost children, either through miscarriage or through a disease. Maybe you're facing a financial pressure right now because of the COVID-19. You've lost your job. I really want to talk about grief, the process of healing, what to do when we're going through a hard time, and I can tell you this. When it comes to grief or going through a hard time, you're either in a situation that is trying, coming out of a situation that is trying, or going into a situation that is trying. But there's always the opportunity and the chance of there to be setback, uh, a disappointment, heartache, fear that you will face as a human being. Now, I know this is not popular. Uh, in the new age circle. And I consider myself old age, new age, in between age. I think truth is eternal. Uh, I believe in the law of attraction. I believe that we set our mind onto more positive outcomes and that our mind can attract to us situations if we use faith. Even in the Bible, it says with faith, all things are possible. So I do believe in a positive mindset. I do know that faith is a powerful agent for getting you out of trying times and putting you into the land of miracles, plenty and happiness. But 
Sometimes there can be a, a, a spiritual bypass, almost sometimes in the new age circles or even in new thought. There can be this idea that there's no place for sorrow, that if you're feeling sad, that you should get rid of that feeling. If you're feeling upset or angry, that you're in a, in a low vibration and that you need to lift up your vibration. It's almost as if we are not allowed to grieve anymore, that we're not allowed to uh, be human. So even in the higher realms, when I talk about connecting to your higher source, your higher mind, your higher power, living out your, your angels, living out the best part of you, even though I believe all of that, I do know this, my friend, that to get higher, many times you've got to go lower. To get higher, many times you got to go deeper. And if the name of this show wasn't Higher Realms, it would definitely be Deeper Realms. Because when God's spirit in the universe is doing a mighty work in your heart, doing a mighty work in your life, many times you're going to go deep into your wounds, deep into your aloneness, deep into your fears. Until you go so deep, you come out on the other side, transform, encouraged, and empowered. You know, as a little kid, I used to get a shovel, and I would dig, dig, dig. And they would ask me, or they would say, if you keep digging, you're going to end up on the other side of the world. You're going to pop out in China. And I used to laugh at that. But that's kind of how it goes with our faith. That's how it goes with our pain. Hi, Melissa Parks. Melissa Parks is saying hi. If you've never seen her show, Joyful Findings, Watch it. She's a minister of spirit. She gives uh, a great advice from the angels. I love Melissa because she's all about finding your joy. We are going to talk about finding joy tonight, finding joy in the midst of our pain, finding joy in the midst of divorce, finding joy in the midst of a cancer, finding joy in the midst of losing a child. And all these things are like, what are you saying? Finding joy. I, I'm going to say there is a way to find joy, but you're not going to find that joy until you have felt that loss, that pain, that suffering, that hurt. In the book of Jeremiah, it said, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Joy comes in the morning. Now that scripture is talking about that, you know, in the next day, if you just keep pressing on the next day, you're going to find opportunities. You're going to find uh, blessings that you may not be feeling right now in this moment of darkness. But I like to play on the words there. It said, weeping may endure for a night. There are times that you literally feel like you're all alone in dark, right? When it's dark, you can't see nothing. It, it feels really alone. So there are times in this world, but as a human, you will feel really alone. You cannot even see your way to the next day. But it says, we be made endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. That morning, it was spelled M-O-R-I-N-G, like the next day. But I like to spell it M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. Mourn, cry, weep, hurt. Pain may endure for a while, but your joy, your peace, your answer comes through the morning. You must allow yourself the opportunity to cry the tears you need to cry. You must allow yourself the chance to feel the pit in your stomach, the despair that you may feel. And, I, and, and what we do not understand in many circles is most people are not comfortable in sadness. Most people are not comfortable in pain. Most people are not comfortable in, in, in tragedy. And I'm not saying you should get comfortable in that. It's very uncomfortable for me. But what happens is many times if our friends are in tra experiencing tragedy, our in-laws are having a problem, uh, our friend is having hurt, it's uncomfortable for us as a friend, as a spouse, as a child, sometimes to know how to deal with those that are in mourning, how to help those that are in mourning. We're not comfortable sitting in somebody else's pain, let alone ours. And we see this in the book of Job. When Job had lost his wife, his children, his cow, he lost everything. And his friends came around. And instead of encouraging him, the friends begin to say, Job, 
What did you do to cause God to punish you? Job, if you would have done this, this wouldn't have happened. And so many times, especially in America, when we're always looking for a quick fix, so many times we want to give people suggestions on how they can get out of their problem. So many times you want to give people answers on how to deal with their problem. And answers are good and suggestions are good. But before you give an answer or before you try to fix your friend who's going through something, just sit with them a while. Just sit with them a while without trying to fix them, without trying to change them. See, this happens so many times, especially with men. Men are geared towards fixing it. We don't want to feel the problem. Bring us the problem. and we want, That's why wives get mad at their husbands. They're like, can't I just share my problem? Can't I just talk to you without you trying to fix it? And I would like the wife and the woman to know it isn't that the man is not acknowledging your pain, but as men, because of our, the women we love and because of our sisters and mothers that we love, our natural instinct is to see how we can save them, to see how we can fix them. So that can come off like the man doesn't care about the pain you're in. Or many men, if you will listen, many times the woman doesn't need you to try to fix it. She doesn't need you to come in and sweep her off her feet to save her. Some things you can't save. Some things only the woman would need is for you to listen and just be there. And it's the same thing with women with the men. Just listen and be there when the husband comes in and he's talking about his bad day after work. Instead of trying to, you know, you know, make him feel better. Sometimes all you need to do is just sit and listen. You know, sitting and listening is really a great way to connect to God. Sitting and listening is a great way to connect to spirit. That's why all the great religions of the world taught meditation. They taught sitting down and, and just becoming still. And, uh, and even though you got a thousand things rushing in your mind, letting it settle down until that one peaceful thought comes up. So tonight we're talking about how do we deal with grief? How do we deal with sorrow? How do we deal with pain? Well, number one, don't be like Job's friend. Don't try to fix your friend right away. Don't try to give them a lot of answers. Sometimes there are no answers. A woman loses her husband. A mom loses her child. A man loses his job. Sometimes there are no answers. Sometimes it's just the cycle of life. You know, I remember years ago when I was in Appa, Chili's, and I appreciate everyone out there that are writing comments. Jules says, I'm, I'm guilty of wanting to fix it. Don't, I'm guilty of it. We're all guilty of it. We're all wanting to fix people because we don't want to see people in pain. But notice, joy comes through the morning. Some people are going to have to cry their tears. They're going to have to feel their disappointment. They're going to have to feel the loss in their heart before they're ever going to be able to experience peace, joy, and happiness again. They'll experience it. They'll experience it. Jill says, my daughter has not talked to me in 18 months. Do you see her coming back to me and when? That kind of loss right there, the loss of relationships. You know, Jill, I'm going to pray for your daughter, but I want to read a scripture real quick. And we're talking tonight about families. We're talking about healing. We're talking about how to survive when life sends us trials. The book of Ruth, and I'm reading out of the Bible and if if it's out of the Torah or the Christian faith, the Old Testament, if you're not Jewish and you're you're not Christian, that's all right. You can still listen and get principles. I preach out of the Vedas. I preach out of the Quran. I preach mainly out of my own spirit. But let's hear some advice out of Ruth. It says Ruth, and this is the Old Testament, Ruth chapter 1, verse 1. Just listen to, to, to life, what life does for some people. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judea, went to the country of Moab to live with his wife and two sons. And then it goes on to say that this wife's name was Naomi. And it says in verse three, Naomi's husband died and she was left with her two sons. Then it goes on to say that Naomi's sons married women, but after a few more years, her two sons died. And then she rose with her daughter-in-laws and left Moab 
For she had heard out of the country of Moab how the Lord had visited his people with bread. Notice this. Naomi had to leave with her husband because there was a famine in the land of Israel. You know, many of you will have to move throughout your life when there are no more jobs. Many of you will have to leave family members because the jobs are not there in that area no more. This is what happened to Naomi, you know, especially with this coronavirus going on. Whether you are like, I believe in wearing masks, I don't believe in wearing masks. I believe the corona is real. I don't believe the corona is real. Doesn't matter what size you are on the subject. The, the, the thing is this, millions of people have lost their jobs. 40 million people. So even though a lot of people still have their jobs and are doing financially well, uh, there are many that are going to have to leave their friends and families because they're going to have to go to another place to find work. And I want to encourage you, Jules, you asked, when will I get back with my daughter? You know, I feel soon. I feel soon that you're going to get back to your daughter within four or five months. That's what I feel. I'm going to pray it sooner. But nobody knows the loss of, of, uh, of family than a mother that's separated from her children or children that are separated from their parents. That's a deep wound. And you look in the Bible, uh, we see that Naomi, her name meant pleasant joyful. She was pleasant. She was joyful. When she when she was young and she left with her husband, you know, she was going to an area that it looked like economics was going to be great. It was going to be a good place to raise her children. But only after a few years, she lost her husband. She lost her children. And when she came back to where she was brought up, they said, hi, Naomi. She said, don't call me Naomi because God has dealt me a bad hand. Therefore, call me Mara, which means bitter. And I don't know about you, but there are times in life when you have been dealt one blow after another, one disappointment after another, one heartache after another. You, too, would probably say, I'm bitter. I'm crushed. I'm hurt. I'm disappointed. Have you ever been so disappointed so many times that you're like, I don't even want to hope no more. Don't even tell me anything good's going to happen because it hasn't for so long. And to get my hopes up, well, it hurts even more when it doesn't happen. In fact, Proverbs said a heart that is disappointed too many times gets even sick at the idea of hope. And I don't know if you have ever been hurt so bad, so deep, so long, that even the idea of trying to hope anymore is too painful. So, you know, Naomi was that way because it was one blow after another to where she got to the point that she didn't even recognize herself no more. Maybe you're listening to this live tonight, or maybe you're watching this by replay. Whether it's live or by replay, I know there's times where you just want to give up hope. Even to hope is painful. But what we notice is this. At some point, Naomi said, I got to get up and I got to go on. Some point in your life when you have mourned long enough, when you have cried your last tear, when you have said your last prayer, there will come to you at some point, the strength to get up and to move on. And the scriptures record that she moved towards Judea. Now, Judea in the Old Testament, every word in the Bible has a meaning. Just as Naomi meant pleasant and Myra meant bitter. A lot of times we start off pleasant, but life situations make us bitter. It says at the point of her bitterness, she finally got up and move towards Judea. Judea in the Old Testament in the Hebrew language meant praise. Praise. The way you get out of a terrible slump, the way you deal with your pain when it hurts so hard to hurt, is you got to find your way back to worshiping spirit. You got to find your way back to connecting to spirit.
You see, spirit's never gone. Even when you don't want to hear from your family, you don't want to hear from your friends, you don't even want, all you do is want to sleep, sleep, sleep. Even in that worst time of sleep and depression, spirit's beside you. You may not feel spirit. You may not see spirit. You may not hear spirit. You may feel that God is not even real no more. When you can't connect to God, when you don't want to connect to spirit, spirit never stops trying to connect to you. And at some point, you will get up and you will decide, I got to move on. If only for your children. See, Naomi had her daughter-in-law, Ruth, to think about. Some of us, we get up and we go to work, not because we like our job, but we know the babies need shoes on their feet and clothes on their back. Some of us, through a divorce, get up and move on when we feel like we don't even know who we are anymore. Who am I without him? Who am I without her? Who am I without my son or daughter? But you get up and you move on because you got other kids depending upon you. You get up and you move on because you got the other responsibilities. And so I applaud you for those that are hurting that still realize in the midst of my pain, I got to still get up because others are depending upon me. But if you feel like everyone's depending upon you, but there's no one that you can lean to, there's no one that understands what you're going through. I'm not going to try to give you a platitude. I'm not going to try to give you an easy fix. All I can tell you is through my years of ministry and through my own pain and through my own hurt that there comes a point in the breaking that you will feel peace. There comes a point in the crying that you will feel a release. And when that comes, you'll have the strength to get up and move on and move on where? Move on to praise and worship. I want to encourage you, if you need to cuss God out, cuss him out. You're not going to go to hell for telling God, why is this happening to me? Why does this happen? You know, years ago, I was about to tell a story and I got sidetracked. Years ago, I was in Chili's. I don't know if you like Chili's or not, but I went there, I was eating, and I saw a friend that I went to high school with. Hadn't seen him in years. And I, I, this guy was the best basketball player. He was a phenomenal basketball player. And, and he was just really athletic and talented. And I remember that he had gotten married right out of high school and he had a child. And that child had autism. And I remember, uh, you know, that, that there, there was a disappointment there. Now, for those that have children that are special needs, we know that these children are gifts from God. We know that these children are powerful communicators of, of giving us more than we can ever realize. But at the same time, it's not wrong for a parent to feel disappointed if there's a health challenge with their child. And I think a lot of times we tell people things that are right but our timing is so off. You can be speaking the truth, but that truth is spoken in such a way that it doesn't empower anybody. you got to give people the season to process their feelings. And so I know that a lot of people were, were saying to him, this is God's gift. God has a reason. You're going to learn more. And I remember after many years of seeing him I, 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 in Chili's, I walked up to his table and I said, hey, buddy, I haven't seen you forever. And I was trying to think of something that I could, to, could, to, could say to encourage him about his son. And his son had already been living for several years, and his son was doing really well on the spectrum. And, I, and he could tell that I was trying to look for the right thing to say, trying to think of the spiritual thing to say, the uplifting thing to say. And I remember he looked me straight in the eyes, and he was talking about his son, and he said to me, I love my son, Jeremy, wouldn't trade him for nothing. But in life, I have learned sometimes crap happens. And he didn't say the word crap. He said the S word. And since this is a family run program, I'm not going to repeat the S word. But he did say sometimes S happens. And then there was a moment of quiet. There was a moment of not having to fill in the gap. 
and peace came into that moment. And you know that so many times as spiritual people, we will tell people there's a reason for everything. There are no accidents. Everything's leading to your highest good. And do you know that these are true statements? But at the same time, sometimes crap just happens. Sometimes you in that moment can't find the higher realm. You can't find the higher reason. You can't find a positive spin upon it. And that's okay. That's okay. Sometimes you may not ever see the reason why until we get to the other side. And sometimes we just have to realize we're not going to understand that until we get to the other side. And I, I want to take the pressure off of spiritual people, people that are trying to encourage other people, trying to find the right thing to say. Sometimes the best thing to say is nothing. Sometimes the best thing to do is just sit and listen. And sometimes the only thing you can do is to find the strength for that day to get up and do another day. So Sarah's putting on here, become bit better and not bitter. And, and I would tell you that if you look at people that are going through grief, you look at people that are going through pain, there are levels, there are things that they go through and, and that we all experience. Uh, but I like what, what Naomi did. She went back to Judah. She went back to the place she came from to deal with her pain, to deal with her hurt, to deal with her disappointment. And if you're right now, don't know what to do. You're going through a situation and you don't know how to get out of it and you feel hopeless. Go back to the things that used to give your soul joy. Go back to the things that used to make you happy. If you're an artist and, and, and you're grieving right now, pick up that paintbrush. Even in the midst of your anger, pick up that paintbrush and you paint those feelings. You paint your confusion. You paint your pain on the canvas. If you're a writer and you're like, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. Write in that journal. Write out your confusion. Write out your pain. Even if you got to rip it up a thousand times, don't let go of the pen. Just because you're in a painful predicament. Maybe you like to run and you're athletic and you like, I, I, I like doing sports. Maybe right now you don't feel like getting out of bed. At some point, get back on the field. Get back to playing basketball. Get back to walking. Get back to exercise. Exercise is a phenomenal thing to release the endorphins. Everybody, even if you're not into exercise as a professional, if you're going through something of a heartache, don't make the bed your permanent position at some point, get up like Naomi. She got up and went back to where she came from. At some point, get back up and do the things that used to give you meaning and purpose. And so exercise is a great thing. Even if you don't like it, it releases these endorphins that causes your bodies to be encouraged and strong. So there's that. Also, I want to encourage you. There are some people that you shouldn't be hanging around that uh, are no good for you when you're going through heartache. You know, Job's friends, they weren't any good for him when he was going through pain. Naomi, when she got up and she went on, she was lucky. She had a daughter-in-law named Ruth that, that really understood her pain. Well, you know, there's Ruth had lost her husband. A few years before that, Naomi lost her husband. Naomi's son was Ruth's uh, husband. They both understood the loss. You know, that's why AA is so good for alcoholics. Why? Because nobody knows what you're going through like the person that has walked in those shoes. So if you are grieving terribly tonight, I would encourage you. Find a, find a support group. Find a network of people that have gone through what you are experiencing. If you lost your children, find a support group of parents that have lost kids. If you've lost your, uh, a job, you know, 
Find people that are looking for work right now that are in the similar field, that are knowing what you're feeling. Sometimes the worst thing you can do, sometimes, many times when you're hurting, like an animal that is hurt, we go into a den, we go into a cave, we go into a place of darkness because we don't want to, we don't want to be messed with. We don't want to be touched. We need time to, to relax and relax and relax. Sometimes relax so much we, we go slip into a great depression. A lot of times depression is just the need for deep rest. Depression, deep rest. And what's interesting though is when you decide that it's time to get out of that cave, to get out of that, that isolation, to get out of that dark room, it would be good to connect with people that can mentor, encourage, and understand where you're coming from. You know, sometimes your pain also leads you to your purpose. You know, we look at, uh, uh, I believe it's, what is it, Jonathan Welch? Maybe I'm wrong on this, but the me the gentleman that created Americans Most Wanted, he had his son violently murdered. And he dealt with that pain for so long that when he wanted to honor the memory of his son, he created American Most Wanted uh, to, to track down criminals that hurt children. And then he created that network of parents that have lost their children to violence. In a way, what we have seen is that this man took his pain and said, I'm not going to allow my pain to destroy me. I may hurt, but I will find purpose. I will find a way to honor my son in this pain. You know, many of you are at a place in your life where you have lived with the pain long enough that you may be able to turn around right now and give honor to that pain by helping someone that's just now entering into that pain. You know, that's where maybe you suffered a divorce. Maybe now you can help other people that are feeling devastated by divorce. You can share your experience. There's nothing like a bonding of people that are bounded by pain, that are bounded by hurt, by are bounded by suffering. And I would encourage you that if you are a healer, if you are a spiritual person, if you are not spiritual or a healer at all, but you have lived life long enough to have gone through something, I encourage you. Higher realms is about getting into a place where spirit can use you, where God can use you, where you can take your life lessons and, and glean wisdom from that to pass on to younger people to pass on to your peers, maybe even to pass on to someone's older, but they're just now going through that and you've already gone through it before them. You have a bunch of wisdom that literally can heal, save, and encourage your neighbor, your friends, your coworkers. So don't be scared to take your experience and pass that wisdom on to others. You know, one of these things that I really want everyone to know and we're here. It's it's 8.33. We got about another 20 minutes in the show. If you're watching live and you have somebody that has passed on, you have somebody that is no longer here in the world in physical form, but that was somebody you love, why don't you put their name in the comment and just give us a description about that person, what you loved about them, what you, what, what you liked about them. Um, I think it's important that we honor the memories of the people that are still with us in spirit, but they may no longer be here in flesh. You know, I think a lot of times when people die, we tell them, well, they're not dead. They're still alive. They're always with you. That is a true statement. But at the same time, there is a physical loss. There is a physical loss. And I think if we do not recognize that people do suffer the loss of the physical person. We do a disservice to them. It's okay to grieve the loss of people in your life. 
that have moved on to spirit world, to heaven, that does not mean that you do not realize that they're, that they're still not alive in spirit. You may realize all night long that mom and dad are still in your heart, that brother and sister are still in your spirit, and that your their memory is kept alive by your love, and that someday you will join them again. You know, one of the things that you'll notice that when people you love are still around you is you'll begin to think of them. You'll think of them, something they said, something they did. It'll pop into your mind. You'll see somebody that will remind you of them and that or you'll hear a song that was your song. These are ways that your loved ones are letting you know they're still with you in spirit. Maybe you dreamed about them in the dream. This is another way your loved one is letting you know they haven't left. They're still with you in spirit. Jill Hayden says, Alan, my dad was a great dad and a great grandparent. You know, Alan, I want to thank you right now for being a great father to Jill. Because so many times in my practice as a soul coach, I deal with grown women that have daddy issues. Because there are a lot of men, especially in older generations, that weren't taught how to meet the emotional needs of their daughter. Because they were not taught how to touch into their own emotions. Men many times are not taught how to feel their heart, express their heart, be comfortable with their heart. We're getting there now, and we got a long ways to go. But there are people, there are men, you know, thank God, such as myself, that have learned to open their heart chakra. And, and I always say the most important relationship is the relationship you have with your mother, is the relationship you have with your father, for these are an imprint into your soul that you will experience time and time again in your adult relationships. So when Jill says, I want to give honor to my dad, Alan, that he was a great dad, well, Alan, I want to thank you. And if you're a dad listening to this tonight on replay or live, I want to ask you the question. What kind of father do you need to be to your daughter? What? How can you show your love to her in such a way that when you pass on and people ask her, who is someone you want to honor? The first person she thinks of is her dad. And she thinks, I love my dad. And I want to let you know that you can love your dad. And, and, and I think it's honor to give honor Alan tonight, but also for all you fathers out there, all you mothers out there, empower your children emotionally. Let your children know that you love them no matter what and that they can come to you no matter what. Not that there isn't discipline and there aren't rules, but we need a little bit more of expression of love on this planet, especially to our children. Jewel says my grandmother Leah, or Leah, L-I-L-A, she lit up when she saw me and always made me love, feel special. Thank you, Grandma. Listen, grandparents, if you are a grandparent, there's probably no retirement at this stage for you. We are living in a day and age where many grandparents are raising their grandchildren or many grandparents are ha help, having to help their children in some way. Why is this? Because our economy is a lot tighter. The economy is not what it used to be. Uh, you know, used to be one man could provide, buy a nice house, provide for his family, take them on a few vacations a year. Now we're seeing a man and a woman both have to work just barely to survive. So there has to be a shift in the economy eventually. So more grandparents are taking on the role of, of, of helping to provide and guide. And so I, I like what she said. Grandma made me feel special. I think the greatest thing you can ever do to help somebody is to make them feel seen, make them feel heard, make them feel validated, make them feel special. Do not be worried that you're going to give your kids a big head. You're going to give your children a big head, a big ego, and you got to pop it down. The world will do enough to attack your child's ego. The world will do enough to attack your grandchildren's ego. I'm not saying to spoil them. I'm not saying not to, to teach them responsibility, but I am saying if you have a child in your life 
whether it's a niece, a nephew, whether it's a, a, a you're a school teacher, wherever children are in your life, you've been called to believe in them. You've been called to see their uniqueness and let them see their own uniqueness. So when you go on into heaven, they can say, my grandpa, my grandma, my aunt, my uncle, my neighbor, my teacher, this person saw me and made me feel loved. I could probably tell you, me personally, and I'm not saying this to get sympathy from anybody, but because I'm a Scorpio rising, we deal with a lot of uh, a lot of dark hurt and pain, and we deal with a lot of adults that have insecurities and they take it out on children. I can probably tell you on one hand, on one hand, I think from until I was 18 years old, I'm not talking about my parents, but when I talk about other leaders in my life, I think on I only got two compliments. Two compliments in 18 years. And do you know the two people that saw the good in me and saw my talent and, and recognized my talent? Do you know that I will never forget them? And that I go back to that conversation 40 year, uh, 35 years ago, it still stays with me. If you want to help people, so that they're at a point 35 years from now. There's so much I've forgotten. There's so much I don't remember. But I remember those two people. You know, there's a great comment that says, most people will not remember what you said, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. And I want to tell you, when we're empowering people, when we're loving people, when we're guiding people, it's more important for them to feel empowered and loved then it is necessarily everything coming out of your mouth, right? Don't be hesitant to encourage somebody. Don't be hesitant to tell somebody the good in them. Don't feel awkward about it. People are starving for genuine appreciation. Sarah says, my granny has passed on. We spent so much time together. She was one of my best friends growing up. We would cut loose and just have so much fun. We laugh so much. So uh, most of the time, I miss her very much. She talked with a Southern accent, and I miss hearing that very much. Thank you, Grandma. Thank you, Grandma, for spending time. My grandma spent a lot of time with me. So, you know, props to all the grandparents out there. You have made a huge difference in the lives of your grandchildren. Uh, you know, one thing here I love is, is uh, you know, she spent time with me. You know, once again, the people that we can heal, love, encourage, we got to slow down and spend time with them. We got to slow down and give them our attention. Even as a parent, more than giving your children the nicest clothes or the nicest car or the nicest uh, uh, toys, spend time with your children. Even if your children don't want to spend time with you. Because as kids, sometimes we don't know what's best for us. So like, oh, I don't want to go to the park. Oh, I don't want to go hiking. I want to play my Nintendo. Don't let the Nintendo be the babysitter. Don't let the TV be the babysitter. Don't let the, uh, you know, anything else be the babysitter. Don't get me wrong. It's okay to allow your kids to have entertainment so you can have a breath of fresh air so you can have some me time. But don't make... Don't make entertainment the permanent babysitter. Make sure that you have quality times with your kid, even if they act like they don't like it, because I promise when they get older, they are going to love these memories. They are going to love the time they spent with you. They're going to appreciate it. So I'm trying to tell you, parents, make sure you spend time with your kids. It's more important that you take your son fishing than work a lot of overtime just to buy him something new. It is the things that we do together that we remember, not the things that we own. I hope that sticks in with everyone that's listening tonight. So once again, let's stop blaming people for the things that they're going through. And let me say this, stop blaming yourself. 
If you're here tonight and you're like, why did I do wrong? Why is everything against me? Listen, you know, Naomi had one thing after another against her. It was life. Job had one thing again. Job in the book of Job, when you hear listen about Job, Job lost his wife, he lost his children, he lost all his crap. It was one tornado after another. It was one tragedy after another, and and everyone was saying, "Oh, you pissed God off. You did something bad. You made God mad, and you got bad karma. And that's why this is happening." Yet in the book of Job, we see that God didn't send this stuff because He was mad at Job. He said Job was the best example of a believer. He said Job was the best human on the planet. So stop thinking that maybe you're a screw up just because you've got a lot of issues going on. Because we see right now that issues do not determine whether you're right with God, whether you're doing things right. And I know law of attraction, I know higher thinking, says that we create our reality to a degree. To a degree, we do create our reality, but not everything. There are some things that are above and beyond you. And when those things are above and beyond you, so what I mean is if you see something bad happening and you know that you had a role playing in that, you did some decisions that helped brought this on, well, just confess, I made a mistake. I did this wrong. Stop beating yourself up and start doing what you know to do right. Let's turn this ship around. But if you're doing everything right and you can still not figure out why this is happening, life sometimes causes things to happen and there's no explanation. And all you can do is to hold on to your faith, hold on to your belief, hold on to your, your God, your universe, your spirit. Go ahead and cry. Go ahead and cuss. Go ahead and, 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 and feel those lower energies. Just don't get stuck in it. Don't get to the place where you're living in darkness. The scripture says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear, for God is with me. Notice this. The secret to your pain to your hurt, to your mourning, is you got to keep putting one foot in front of the other. Though I walk through this shadow of death, meaning right now there's a lot of you that are in the shadow of maybe losing the job, in the shadow of having a sickness, in the shadow of of maybe something being hard coming your way. Don't let the shadow, don't let the darkness, don't let the lack of light make you feel like you just need to sit up and give up. You got to walk through some stuff, my friend. If you live long enough, you're gonna walk through some stuff. And the ones that are able to finally make law of attraction work where you think positive thoughts and it brings you positive outcomes. The ones that are able to connect to their spirit, the ones that are able to turn around a bad situations are the people that do not give up from moving forward. You may not know the whole picture. You probably will not know the whole picture. You may have to take a job and you don't know if you're going to like it or not. You may have to even move across state and you don't know if you're going to like it or not. All you're doing is walking by faith. All you're doing is going through the next open door. And that's the secret in life. The secret is not getting scared when you don't see the next, you know, all the steps. You may have an idea of the big picture. You may have an idea of what you want to do with life. But many times your great idea, your vision, your calling, God will place the big picture in your heart, but he'll make you walk it out step by step. And a lot of times you will not have the whole blueprint in front of you. If you do, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, Krishna, everybody in between, thank spirit. But many times, you're not going to know from A to Z. All you're going to know is the next step.
Well, what do I do after that? You don't do nothing until the spirit reveals the next step. And one step after a time. And before you know it, if you take it step by step, after a while, what seems so hard is really behind you. And you're now out of that valley and you're on to a mountain. Listen, you will not stay in the valley forever if you're willing to keep walking by faith. You will not stay in a situation of depression, sadness, and pain forever if you're willing to keep pushing one day at a time. Because sooner or later, when you have a breakdown, a breakthrough comes. The scripture says God is near a broken heart and a contrite spirit. Spirit loves the people that are hurting. Spirit loves the people. Well, if spirit loves me, why am I going through this? That I can't answer, my friend. All I can tell you is, even if you feel alone, you're not alone. And even if you're in pain, it's not permanent. You could say, well, my death of my husband was permanent. Yes, that physical body being gone was permanent. But your love for him will not always hurt. At some point down the road, you'll be able to remember him without feeling devastated. That may not be the day. That may not be tomorrow. It may not be this year, but it will come. Well, what do I do in the meantime, Brother Ryden? You take it one step at a time. You just get up today and say, what is it that I can do today? What is it I can do today without even worrying about tomorrow? In fact, the greatest faith says, do not think about tomorrow for tomorrow will take care of itself. Just focus on what you need to do today and do it with gratitude. Do it with thanksgiving. Do it with faith. Do it with trust. Jill says, thank you very much. This has helped me keep my positive, my positive that my daughter will be back in my life. I do believe your daughter will be back in your life, Jill. I would also encourage you, and I encourage this to everybody. Jill, ask yourself, where is there some, where is there, where is there a daughter that is looking for her mother? Because what happens here is, Jill, you have so much motherly instinct, and here your daughter is separated from you for whatever pain or reason that she feels that she needs to be away. Can you still give your love to other people that need it? And that's one of the secrets of being able to to manifest in your life the miracle that you're needing is to give what you're needing to someone else that has the need. So if you're a mother that is grieving over the separation of your children, I promise there are kids that are not related to you that would still love to be able to have the kindness, the nurturing, and the motherly instinct that you have. Give it to those children that are missing a mother in their life. Give that motherly love to somebody, even if it's not your daughter. Give it to some child. That's the same thing if you're discouraged right now. Pick up the phone and encourage somebody. You're like, oh no, I can't do that. Why would I encourage, I, I'm too depressed, I don't wanna talk. Weeping may endure for a night. Joy cometh in the morning. One of the things you need to do to get encouragement back into you, to get hope back into you, to get excitement back into you, is you got to start giving that energy out. Like, I don't got no encouragement. How am I going to do it? Pick up the phone. Call somebody and just say, I had you on my mind. And I want to tell you that I love you. And just by saying that, it will release an energetic connection with that person. And you'll think of more things to encourage them. And you know what's funny? By the time you hang up, even though you're encouraging somebody else, you yourself will start to feel better. In fact, many times, the reason why we stay in our, our, our sadness is because all we can see is our sadness. All we can see is our pain. All we can see is the shadow of the valley of death. We don't see nothing else because we have fixated on our problem. Problem, problem, problem. You need to get a different perspective from your problem, my friend. And the only way to get a different perspective is to take your eyes off of the problem. It'll still be there, trust me. Take your eyes off it. Give yourself permission not to worry about the problem for one day. 
and then look to other people. I promise you this. You cannot outgive spirit. The more you give to spirit, the more that spirit will give to you. And you do this by encouraging other people, loving other people, helping other people. And when you help people, when you need it the most, that sets a miracle in motion. That's just the energy that you're in. Instead of an energy of fear and worry, you now crossed over into an energy of faith. Because when you start giving to others, it creates faith. When you give to others, it creates hope. When you give to others, it creates a good karma. What you sow, you shall reap. You will reap. I promise you this. If you sow when you do not feel like it the most. We still got five minutes. I hope this is encouraging you. I hope that you know that I love you that God loves you, spirit loves you. Stop blaming yourself. Stop blaming yourself. If you're asking me tonight, how long must I endure in this? I don't know the answer to that, but I can tell you this. You can connect to spirit. You can connect to hope. You can connect to trust and faith. It's still there even if you don't feel it. Just keep pushing forward. Just keep pushing on. Keep worshiping. You know, <clears throat> I got about four minutes and I'll give you a little, a little insight to me. Uh, the book of Romans talks about that when we go through such heartaches, that there comes a time that we groan and we moan and we cry and we weep in the spirit. And that it's through our tears that spirit hears our heart and moves on our behalf. Sometimes you need to cry, you need to weep, you need to just pour it out on a pillow. I think that's why I love, I came from the Pentecostal background. I was filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm one of those tongue talkers. I'm one of those people that speaks in tongues. They would call that speaking in the la uh, light language in the New Age circles. Some angel readers call that the angel language. I would encourage you that if you're going through something, turn up the worship music, turn up the healing gospel songs or the Hindu songs or whatever. Turn up the songs of the soul and just begin to call on spirit. Just begin to surrender to God. Just begin to pour it all out. And you, what can happen is you can find your tongue starts to move uh, kind of weird. And before you know it, you're speaking in tongues. It doesn't make any sense that somebody came in, it would sound like gibberish to them. What's going on is you're no longer praying in human understanding. Your soul is praying. And when the soul prays, it's a heavenly language that you won't understand. But you will feel that language moving the pain out of you, moving the grief out of you, feeling with you with love and hope and peace. So I still definitely pray in the Holy Spirit. And for those of you, you're like, I've never done that. I'm, I, I came from a very quiet religion. I would encourage you, turn up the music, shut the door and just talk to spirit like you're talking to your best friend. Talk to God like you're talking to your therapist. Talk to talk to the higher realms, your angels. Like you're talking to someone almost in the mirror, like you're talking to yourself, that you're just getting off your chest all the stuff that you do and don't understand. And you will feel that spirit will come in and begin to help you. So anyways, I want to tell everyone I love you. Thank you for watching Higher Realms. You are not alone. And whatever you're going through, hold on. You will find the answer. Spirit will show you how to get out of that and love again and hope again and believe again. Next Tuesday, I'm having Wendy Lloyd on. Wendy is a professional psychologist and a woman entrepreneur coach. So if you are a woman thinking about starting your own business, starting your own career, you want to watch next Tuesday. I said Monday, but it's next Tuesday at 8 o'clock. You want to watch. 
reach out and tell all the women that are wanting to make more money or wanting to do something in their own career to watch Tuesday Night Higher Realms with me. If you've enjoyed this show, do me a favor. When the uh, when it comes back up, hit the replay on Facebook. Share this with your family and friends. I'm already out of time. Namaste. God bless you. See you next Tuesday. You're never alone. Become a Goldilocks Productions VIP patron. Receive exclusive access to live stream special and other epic perks. Join the Goldilocks Productions VIP community today.